All right, good afternoon, everyone. I am uh, Councilmember Rafael Salamanca, Chair of the Subcommittee on Planning, Dispositions, and Concessions. Welcome, everyone, to today's hearing. Uh, today, we're joined by Councilmember Andrew, uh, Andrew Cohen and uh, Councilmember uh, Mark Traeger. Uh, today, we'll be holding two hearings. The first item is LU704, the Habitat for Humanity Single Family Homes Phase 3 application. This application pursuant to Article 16 of the General Municipal Law for approval of an Urban Development Action Area Project, a real property tax exemption, and a waiver of the area designation requirements and requirements of Section 197C and D of the Charter. These approvals will facilitate the rehabilitation of three single-family vacant homes by the sponsor, and the homes will be, will be then sold to purchasers making no more than 80% of AMI. The affected properties are located in Queens and Councilmember Miller's district. The second item is LU705, the 233 uh, Stuyvesant Avenue, Brooklyn application. This application is for its tax exemption pursuant to Article 11 of the Private Housing Finance Law. This approval would facilitate the rehabilitation and preservation of a four-story building containing eight one-bedroom units. The affected property is in Councilmember Carnegie's district. I am now opening up the public hearing on LU704, the Habitat for Humanity, single-family homes phase three application. Mr. Speaker. Good afternoon, my name is Jordan Press. I'm Executive Director for Development and Planning at HPD. Land use number 704 consists of three small vacant homes located at 99-9-203rd Street, 202-02-111th Avenue, and 190-17-109th Road in Queens Council District 27. Each home was a foreclosure and as a result of a default on HUD FHA mortgages over 20 years ago and turned over to NYCHA to operate as part of their public housing portfolio. As residents moved out of the moved out, the homes deteriorated significantly and require substantial rehabilitation. NYCHA, with approval from HUD, selected Habitat for Humanity as a sponsor and conveyed the homes to them on July 26, 2016. The sponsor is following the model of HPD's Small Homes Rehab Program and is in the process of rehabbing the homes in order to sell to purchasers as home ownership units. The re rehabilitation is approximately 50% to 60% complete under HUD's guidelines and the sponsor will convey the properties to low and moderate income families earning between 50% and 80% of AMI, which is uh, about $43,000 to $68,000. In addition, the homes uh, must remain affordable to present and future homeowners for a period of 30 years uh, at no higher than 80% AMI as required by HUD. The sponsor has conducted marketing outreach events in the local community in order to reach as many potential applicants as possible. To date, applications have been received and are now being reviewed. Today, HPD is before the planning subcommittee seeking UDAP tax benefits for a period of 20 years in order to assist the affordability for potential purchasers. Council, Mil Council Member Miller has been briefed and has indicated his support for the project. Thank you. All right. Uh, do we have any questions from members of the committee? No? Uh, very quick question. So uh, the, whoever purchases these homes have to remain in these homes for 30 years it, at the, a AMI level of 80% or lower? The, um, they don't have to remain in the home, but if any subsequent purchaser would come in, it would have to be at, at no higher than that amount. Okay. The new purchaser. All right. Are there any more members of the public who wish to testify? I see none. I will now close public hearing LU704. I am now opening up the public hearing on LU705, the 233rd Stuyvesant Avenue application. Mr. Press. Thank you. Land use number 705 consists of the exemption area containing a partially occupied four-story, eight-unit building located at 233 Stuyvesant Avenue in Brooklyn Council District 36. The building was originally approved for disposition by the City Council on November 6, 1995, through resolution number 1196. The City conveyed the property to the 233 Stuyvesant Avenue Housing Development Fund Corporation as a limited equity cooperative under the Tenant Interim Lease Program in 1996. The property was also approved for a partial Article 11 tax exemption, which will expire in 2029. In 2010, 233 Stuyvesant Avenue HDFC entered into a loan agreement with a private lender using the shares of the HDFC as collateral. 
When the individual shareholders did not meet their obligation to pay back the loan, the lender foreclosed on the shares. The court appointed a receiver to hold the shares and manage the property. Acting on behalf of the HDFC, the receiver has requested HPD consent to Bridge Street Development Corporation's application for a loan that will pay off the mortgage and fund the acquisition of the shares, as well as rehabilitate the property under HPD's participation loan program. The limited equity co-op will be dissolved and a new rental HDFC will be created. The new sponsor will be required to maintain the property as affordable rental housing and enter into a regulatory agreement with the city for a period of 30 years, coinciding with the term of the PLP agreement. The building requires a moderate rehabilitation that will include the entire envelope, common areas, and complete roof replacement. The work will also include new bathroom fixtures, new cabinets, countertops, flooring, and light fixtures in the kitchen. Additionally, the work will be accomplished with the tenants in place. HPD is currently before the Council seeking Article 11 tax benefits retroactive to April 1, 2012 in order to ensure the financial and extended affordability of this project. In total, the tax exemption will be for a term of 36 years. Councilmember Cornegy has been briefed and has indicated his support. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any questions from the committee? As long as we're all here. <laughs> uh, on these, so the residents are paying maintenance currently for each unit. How, how do we know what they're going to pay for rent for each unit? So the, we have sent out income affidavits, and um, we always uh, have an intention of having them pay not more than 30% of their income towards rent. So for the existing tenants, hopefully they'll all return their income affidavits, and we'll set the rent accordingly. And then we'll make adjustments on the, um, on the vacant units uh, to ensure that the property is viable. There's also so some your, your goal is seven, on the vacant units is 75% of AMI, but it, that's subject to making the property viable. <laughs> it, well, so the intention is to have a, a blended rate of a, about 75% income, 75 to 80% income, and then we, but we need to know what the existing tenants' income is. Additionally, three of the tenants, my understanding is, have Section 8, so they're already guaranteed that they're going to be paying not more than 30% of their income towards rent. Uh, what is, I'm sorry, what are the num number of units? Eight. Oh, only eight. Okay. And and uni and uh, of, of the eight, two are original, were original till tenants who bought in um, for $250. Uh, four are renters who are living there now, and two are vacant. Who are they renting from? The, who are who are the renters renting from? Are they renting from the shareholders? Yes, or from, so from the co from the cooperative. The sharehold the, the renters are renting from the from the co-op. Which but, so the co-op is holding the shares yes. from or or those shares have been forfeited or. And there's actually there's a receiver now for the court. So. And conceivably, if someone happens to be making more than 80 uh, percent, someone could be paying more rent. Then we'll, we'll set it still towards at 30 percent of their income so that they're paying their fair share. But the, the rent could be, could the, the rent be substantially higher than the maintenance payments? Is that? Um, so it, yes, it could be. Um, but again, we're gonna, we, we need these income affidavits so that we can be sure to set it at 30%. Additionally, um, for those who might have Section 8, because you can have Section 8 in, a, in an ownership environment, um, again, if the maintenance is only, I'm making Section up Section 8 people are sort of protected. There, there, would be room, there would still be room under Section 8 for the maintenance to shift to a higher rent and still not burden the tenant. But yeah, they're limit, they're, they're, they, they have their own protections, but if I, if I don't have Section 8, my, I could be paying X for maintenance and I could end up paying substantially more for rent, particularly but, if... But not more than 30%. Not more not than 30% of their income. 30% of their income. That's, a, that's our standard practice in any rehab deal because the goal of what we're doing is to not displace anybody. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Members of the committee? All right. Are there any uh, more members of the public who wish to testify? Seeing none, I will now close the public hearings on LU705. We will now vote to approve LU704 and LU705, which have the support of the local council members. Uh, council, please call the vote. 
Councilmember Salamanca? Aye on all. Councilmember Cohen? Aye. Councilmember Traeger? Leaving the vote open. So I would like to thank all members of the public, my colleagues and councils and land use staff for attending today's hearing. This meeting is hereby adjourned.